This is the Type 10 Defender, and it's better than the Type 9 Heavy in almost every single way. Except one, but it's a big one. Because when you want to transport enough supplies to keep a small planet in business, you currently have two options. And one of those options involves selling your soul to the Empire for access to what's possibly the ugliest ship that they have exclusivity over. The other option though is the Type 9 Heavy which has no such restrictions. And it's not hugely expensive for what you get either. I mean, 76 million or so isn't a small amount of change, but when you consider that the cutter could carry only 4 tons more and costs over 200 million, it goes to show that the Type 9 has possibly the best bang for buck out of all of the choices for a freighter. Or should that be chunk for credit? Actually, we'll stick with bang for buck. Chunk for credit sounds like the result of a bad night at the Jameson Memorial Bar. This... The Type 9 Heavy is Lacon's largest and, some would argue, most capable trader. Released in 3300 to the masses, this ship does what a Type 7 cannot, justify the use of a large landing pad. Because this thing is huge. Don't get me wrong, there are ships that are bigger. The Type 10, for example, is bigger in every dimension, and the Imperial Cutter is both longer and wider. But that doesn't negate the fact that the Type 9 is still an enormous cow patch shaped beast that makes use of a large pad. And don't forget that the name of this ship is the Type 9 Heavy. Although when you sit in the cockpit and move the ship into space, it's difficult to forget the heavy part, because it handles about as well as a car would if the steering rack was welded into a single position. Once this ship is in flight, changing course needs planning, and that's something that can be challenging when you're trying to illegally smuggle 700 tons of onion head into a port at full speed. Depending where you look on paper, the Type 9 and 10 have the same agility rating, but the Type 9 has inferior roll and pitch speeds to the Type 10, and it really shows. But at the end of the day, the Type 9 is basically Lake on Super Tanker of Commerce, so you can't really expect agility and speed to match a combat ship. And whilst I could make comparisons between the Type 9 and the Cutter for handling, given the similarities they have on internal capacity, given the price difference, that's not exactly a fair fight. Hell, you could argue it's not a fair fight between the Type 9 and the Type 10 based on price, but given that the 10 is a reworked 9, I think it's fair to compare those two on those grounds alone. You can tell that this ship was built for carrying large volumes though, Look at the landing gear for example. This gear was built to hold both the ship and everything you can pack inside it. Probably with another fully laden Type 9 resting on top of it too. The frame itself looks shaped to maximise capacity and whilst the cockpit is large it's not excessively so, like some other ships. Instead it looks functionally large, so more cargo can be crammed into the rest of the ship. Range isn't horrific too with the right setup, although as always the more cargo you load in the lower it'll get. Whilst we're talking about trade, there's also mining as the two go hand in hand, and for mining it's... well it's alright. It has the right hardpoint slots and a capacity that will allow you to mine for a long time before trading your wares, but the manoeuvrability can get grating when navigating through more densely packed out regions or when attempting to work through a space rock that's been blasted apart to get to the core. If I'm honest, I'd rather be mining in a python or if I really have to use a large ship, I'd rather be in my cutter for the speed and handling benefits over the Type 9. But with the cutter again, we'd have to circle back to the price difference. As for everything else, well for exploring, I'd rather use a Type 6 if I'm going to use one of Lacon's traders for it. Don't get me wrong, 45 plus light years of range in a single jump is possible with the Type 9 and it'll carry anything you might need on your trip, but it also handles in supercruise like a lethargic snail which is pretty frustrating. Using a Type 6 instead means compromising on internals due to lack of space, but it goes further, handles better and is also considerably easier to land. Because as always if you're out exploring the black it's nice to sometimes pull over and taking some of those sights from outside the ship. Although it is worth mentioning that the Type 9's canopy is one of Lacon's designs that allow a huge field of vision, including below, which can come in handy if you're after some new plants to scan, 
assuming you find a spot to land the ship in the first place. And that leaves us with combat. With three medium and two small hard points, given that this ship is a large, slow moving target, in most cases I'd argue it's simply best not to bother. But unlike other trading ships by Lacon, you can equip a fighter bay. This means you can have someone watching your back while you get on with using the Type 9 for its intended purpose. Plus, with a decent fighter pilot on board, they can run interference if you need to escape because an enterprising pirate wants a cut of your profits. Given the mass lock factor of the Type 9, jumping out is usually pretty easy, providing you can get those precious seconds to get clear of any regions of space that mass lock your FSD, and a fighter can buy you those seconds. Although you likely won't have time to pick it up afterwards, but fighters are pretty cheap to replace anyway. At the end of the day, the Type 9 isn't suited to a multi-role purpose or as a combat ship, and I'm okay with that. Lacon designed this ship with a single goal in mind, shifting stuff from point A to point B and starting over again with another load. Like the Type 6, this isn't a ship that I'm overly fond of, but I do respect it. And if you've got your inner trucker wanting to make an appearance, frankly, this is one of your best options. It's not overly expensive for what you get, and it's staggeringly good at the role it's designed for. Plus, if you're in the market for a new trading ship, just looking at the Type 9 can tell you most of what you need to know about it. If I was so inclined, I could probably summarise with a list of 9 reasons to buy a Type 9, but I won't do that because you only need one. Because at some point, you're going to need to shift those large volumes of cargo, and there is very little out there that can do a better job with a low rebuy value and a large hold. As always, thanks for watching. I do hope you enjoyed this one. Subs, likes, comments, etc. are all very much appreciated, and with any luck, I'll catch you on the next one. Take care, much love, and 07. Thank you.